Hey everyone, and welcome to the smoking section. Uh, I'm Sean. For those of you that don't know me, uh, I run a Facebook group and an Instagram group called the smoking section. Um, I also do YouTube videos, which you're probably watching this right now from YouTube, but I would love to introduce you to a new series that I'm introducing to the channel only for the sheer fact of a, I want to put out more product B. I think it's important that I bring this to the channel and see, I always have a lot of people asking me different things about cigars, everything from terminology to uh, different types of cigars, different things about cigars. So what better way than to create a one of a kind in, in my world, a one of a kind video that I would be producing for educating people on cigars. So now there's a lot of things that I'm still learning as well. I am by no means a professional when it comes to cigars. Uh, I'm, I'm learning constantly. Uh, there always seems to be something new in the world of cigars. And I, I just really felt like I wanted to bring this to the channel, just not for, not so much for beginners, but so that way we could all kind of learn together on different things. Um, you know, when I went through a lot of the information, and I mean, I have packets of information that I've been doing research on. I've had other people, you know, find some things for me and said, hey, you know, you, sh you should try and put this into a channel sometime. So I, I would love to bring this stuff to it. And today is going to be our first video for Back to the Basics of Cigars. And this series is going to go through everything. Today, we are going to be going through how to speak the language of cigars. So different terms, different terminology, different definitions, different things that you might hear somebody say and be like, yeah, okay, sure. I, I know exactly what you're talking about and have no idea. This might help you either understand a little bit more about a conversation that's going through, or it might teach you something that you didn't know already. So today I have a bunch of terms I have everything right here. I got definitions and, and everything. And it's going to be a little bit of me reading, a little bit of, you know, me wanting to try and get, you know, some things across when it comes to the terminology of cigars. And, you know, just little little back fillers and, and all this stuff to, to kind of help you understand the world of cigars if you are just getting into it. Now, if this is, if you're already a professional and you're like, hey, you know what, I know what all of these mean. I don't have to listen to this. Still maybe pay attention a little bit, maybe just watch the video, see how it goes. But this is going to be the first video of the series, Back to the Basics of Cigars. So I hope you guys enjoy it. But yes, today we are going to be going over how to speak the language of cigars. So if you see me look down, I, I want to make sure that I get the definition of some of these things correctly, because sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. But I'm being upfront with you guys right off the bat. I do have a sheet, a cheat sheet. Because there is a lot of information that I want to get out there and I want to make sure that it's correct. So just bear with me. This might be a little bit of a longer video today. I'm not sure. It might be, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. We'll see how fast we get through all of this stuff. But So first word that we have here, and, you know, it, it was kind of a, a cool, well, I'll just throw it up there. It, the first word that we have is the band. The band of the cigar, and of course, I am not prepared for what I'm going to be talking about, but it's okay. So, the band. So, this is The Clown by uh, Dan Lee Honduras Tobacco, and the band is this wrap that you see right here, the wrap that goes around the cigar. So, if you ever hear anybody say anything about, you know, oh, that thing has an awesome band, or this or that, they're not talking music. Okay, and I know I'm 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 gonna throw some jokes in there. I'm sorry if my jokes aren't as funny, or if you don't find them funny. I think I'm hilarious, and that's all that matters. <laughs> but so the band, so the band of the cigar, and this was the part that I didn't realize in the beginning. I always thought that the band was just to mark what the cigar was, who it was coming from, what line it came from. Just like you have the Perdomo Lot 23 versus the Perdomo you know, 10th anniversary champagne, two different bands, but the, the band isn't just telling you what it is or who it's coming from, but they were also used to protect from stains when the rollers 
of these awesome cigars would roll their cigars and it wouldn't stain their gloves. So that was the whole purpose of the band of the cigar. It wasn't just to tell you that, Hey, I'm smoking a uh, Rocky Patel or uh, my father's or an LFD. It was to protect the white gloves from the rollers as they rolled the cigars and they didn't get all the oils or anything on their white gloves. So I thought that that was pretty interesting as well. But yes, the band is what's going around the cigar, which can tell you and usually does tell you who it's from and what cigar you're smoking. But that's, I figured that would be a good place to start with these. The next one is barrel or body. So when you talk about the barrel or the body of the cigar, you are talking about the cigar itself. Uh, it's just it's just the body. It, it, there's nothing. If somebody says like, "Oh, that one has," look at the barrel on that cigar. It, you know, it might come off a little odd because you can say barrel or body, but you know, it's it's just two different ways of saying the same exact thing. So I figured, you know, some people just like some people have different ways of you know saying the same thing. This is this is going right down that same exact path. So if somebody says that has a nice barrel or that has a nice body, they're talking about the same thing with the cigar. So second or third word I have on the list is the head. So the head is going to be exactly what it says, the top of the cigar. This is where you're going to be taking your draws from, like so. So there are a lot of different types of heads, which we will get into in a later video. But as of right now, all you need to know is the head is where you are going to be doing your pulling from. As soon as you clip it, whether you use a V cut or a straight cut or a punch or your knife or your fingernail, or if it's a chisel and you pop the top, that is where you are going to be doing your pull from. As you light your cigar, you're going to be pulling from the head of the cigar. Now, before I go any further, if this is getting too basic for you, I'm sorry, but I wanted to start somewhere because I do work at a cigar shop and I got to tell you, there has been many a times that I've had people that were first time cigar smokers who didn't even know what side of the cigar to either light or cut it from. So I wanted to create this series just to open up the world to everything and try and help out anybody who might be just getting into cigars or somebody that didn't know any of these terminology before and they want to be able to now speak the talk of cigars. So I just want to get that out one last time before we keep going through. So next word is the foot. It's not your foot. It's not your neighbor's foot. It is the foot of the cigar. And that right there is this little guy here. And that is where you will be lighting your cigar from. So the head is where you take your draw from or do your cut or both, which you usually need to do both to get this going. And the foot is where you will be lighting your cigar. So basically, you know, we'll go through later down the line how I wind up lighting my cigars. You know, is there a proper way? Is there a better way? Is there the only way? We'll go through over that throughout this whole entire series. We will be going from head to toe. Terminology to leaves of the tobacco plant to how to light, how to cut, this, that, and the other thing. Everything is back to the basics of cigars. So just keep that in mind. But yes, our next word was foot, and that is where you are lighting your cigar from. Now, how appropriate. The draw. The draw is what you are doing as you are bringing in smoke after you've already cut your head, you have lit the foot of the cigar, and as you light that cigar, you are pulling smoke towards you. That is called the draw. Now, with the draw, you are going to be getting smoke. Now, you will also be getting some of those nice combinations of flavors that most, if not all, cigars have. Um, some cigars have that earthy taste. Some have hints of cocoa or chocolate or nut or wood, such as cedar or oak. It, you know, there's all these flavors that might really start getting into the cigar as you were doing your draw. But this is basically how you are going to smoke your cigar. So as you have it lit, you don't need to keep lighting it. It should st stay lit as long as you keep pulling on it. Not continuously, but take a draw, let it sit, blow it out, you know, talk with your friends, watch a little bit of your movie, and then you can usually go back and take another one without having to redraw it. As you see there. So our next word is 
the dry draw. So the dry draw is something that you can do before you even light the foot of your cigar. You can actually get almost the, the taste as the air goes through your cigar. So basically what you're going to be doing, and let me go ahead and get that cigar back out. I might as well just keep that out here. So let's grab this guy right here because I think this is a beautiful cigar. So now this is the Andalusian Bull by LFD, if you didn't already know that already. But so this one's not cut, but we're going to pretend that it is. So after I cut the cigar, and if I wanted to try and see if I can taste anything before I even get the light, before I get the smoke or the pepper or whatever that you have going on with that cigar, depending on its type, whether it be mellow, medium, mild or full and we will get into that later as well you can take a pre-puff or a dry draw which is you just taking your cigar and just kind of bringing air through it before it's even lit and a lot of cigars will have a nice flavor or a nice air that is carrying that flavor through the cigar that you can kind of get a hint of some different notes that you might not get while the cigar is lit so as long as you know that you're not going to be smoking a cigar without it lit, but you can do a dry draw just to kind of get some idea about what you might be in for, you can do that as well. So our next word on the list is a ring gauge. And I wanted to make sure that I wound up having the definition for this because it gets a little confusing with this definition for that. So I'm going to read the definition for this one because I think that it has some good information and I don't want to botch this up. So the ring gauge is the diameter of the cigar. It is measured equal to 1 64ths of an inch. A 64 ring gauge would be one inch thick. A 32 ring gauge would be a half of an inch thick. So if I have this cigar here, if this is a 64 ring right here, which it's not, but I'm just saying if it was, if this part right here was 64, if it said that this was a six by 54, that means that is it is a six inch long cigar by a one inch thick cigar. So uh, let me run that by you again. So if I buy this cigar and they tell me that this is a six by fifth or six by sixty-four, that means that it's going to be six inches long by one inch thick for the cigar. So just keep that in mind. So now if you go through and you're buying a cigar and you say, you know, oh look, look at this cigar. This is a cigar that is a five by thirty-two. That means that it's going to be five inches by half of an inch thick, as we see in here. So I wanted to make sure that I was I was able to explain that properly. Now, you have to be good with fractions to do that. But, you know, as time moves on, you will start learning what is a good ring gauge for you. Um, maybe one inch thick is a little too much for you, and you just don't like having it really kind of, you know, chew on that cigar while you're trying to puff on it. So, you know you'll keep these things in mind the more that you start buying these cigars and learning about these cigars and what feels good in your hand and what feels good to draw on as well. So our next word that we have here is the filler. And this is the tobacco that makes the center of the cigar. There are two main types of filler, short and long. And for us to get back into that, I have one right here, which is the long filler, which is Filler tobacco made from whole leaves or larger pieces that run through the entire length of the cigar. The presence of a long filler often suggests that the cigar was handmade. So if this cigar was a long filler or had long filler in it, it's going to have that long full leaf throughout the whole length of the cigar. Whereas, and our next word that we have involved here is short filler which is this consists of small pieces of tobacco used to fill a machine made cigar so if somebody says man i really hate short filler cigars it means that they're just getting pieces bits and pieces of those leaves that they're using packing a cigar and then rolling it and usually it's made which they say here is made by a machine which we will get into all of that later when it comes to the different definitions of that, which I have those words a little bit further down the line, but we're not there yet. All right. So we're, we're, we're about halfway through right now, these words and definitions, and I hope I'm not moving too quickly for you. Um, 
if, if you do have any questions or if you think that I missed a definition, if you made it to this part of the video, I thank you. But if I missed anything or things that you think should be named, write it in the comments and I can bring in another video for like terminology part two or something. So just keep that in mind as well. I, this is only a short list that I thought was really going to hit some of the main key parts. But there's a ton that you could learn about cigars, and that's why this series was, was made. So just keep that in mind. So the next word that I have here is the blend. So a blend is the mixture of different types of tobacco in a cigar, in a cigar including up to five types of filler leaves, a binder leaf, and the outer wrap. So... As you see here, we're going to use the beautiful Andalusian bull again. So going from the inside, so you're going to have at least five types of leaves within here. So that's going to be all this area right in there. That's going to be five leaves about in there. Now, some companies use more, some use a little less. But for the sake of the definition, we're going to say that there's about five different leaves in there to bring up a nice, easy blend for the cigar. Now, going... To the outside now, you're going to have one leaf that's going to wrap this. Now, whether that is a Maduro, a dark leaf, a Corojo, kind of like a medium leaf or a Connecticut, which is going to be an even lighter leaf, or even like a Candela, which is like a greenish type of leaf, um, which is going to go ahead and wrap the outside. But then before we even get to the outside, there is that binder, which is just that leaf that just kind of keeps all of that together. You wrap it tight or you kind of keep it aerated nicely. Um and then you put your wrap on. So then you have your five leaves in the in the center, which is your filler. You have your binder, which is a leaf that wraps all that together. And then you have your wrap, which is going to be that nice outside looking that you have right there. So that is going to be your blend. And that's going to determine, you know, what type of spices you get. Are you going to, you know, smoke a lot of pepper? Are you going to be getting you know, some hints of cocoa, some hints of that cedar, you know, that's where you're going to get a lot of those flavors through your blend. So just keep that in mind as well. So the next word that we have on the list here, and this is going to be where I said it's a little further down the list, we have a hand rolled cigar. So if we go to the hand rolled definition, the hand rolled cigar is a cigar entirely made with high quality wrapper and long filler. In some cases, hand rolled refers to cigars bunched by machine, but rolled by hand. So you're going to have all of those, the, the binder, the filler and all of that. It's going to be bunched together by machine. And then you have somebody at a table who is rolling that cigar by hand. So that's going to be hand rolled. Now, you have a handmade cigar, which is going to be, and I, I, I guess I could read the definition for you guys. A handmade cigar is a cigar made completely, entirely by hand with high quality wrap and long filler. All premium cigars are handmade. Hand rollers can generally use more delicate wrapper leaves than machines. So those are going to be everything. They're going to grab the binder. They're going to grab the filler. They're going to get that all together by hand. And then they're going to roll it. So that's what handmade means. Now, our last one that you can get is a machine made. And as we heard in another definition, that machine made is going to, you know, you can almost put almost all of those little bits of the tobacco leaves in the machine, let it bring it all together, and then it'll roll it itself. And that's where you're going to get most of those machine made cigars from is when, you know, when they get all those little pieces and all that. Now, some people don't like machine made. I have only ever smoked uh, hand rolled and handmade cigars. But now if somebody says, Hey, you know, is that a hand rolled cigar? And you don't know, or if you just saw something, you know, down the line, you just did an event for LFD and they said, these are all handmade cigars. You can say, no, this, this was made everything by hand. They grabbed the filler, the binder and the wrap, and they put it all together. And this is the cigar I'm smoking versus a hand rolled cigar, which was like, Oh, well, you know, I got my, filler and binder put together by a machine, but then somebody wound up taking that and rolling it. So those are some terminology that you can try and keep in the back of your head. And it's cool facts to kind of know, I think, to kind of see what some cigar companies put into making their cigar and whether or not you can respect them more or less for what they wind up doing to get that cigar out.
So the next word that we have on our list is shade grown. And this one I thought was pretty cool. I'm going to read you the exact definition. Now, I'm not going to read the definition for everyone. A lot of these I know, but some of them I wanted to make sure that I got the facts right. And since there's so much information in these, I just didn't want a chance saying the wrong thing. So bear with me. So a shade grown uh, cigar would be some tobacco leaves are grown under cheesecloth cheese cloth tents, which makes them thinner and less potent in flavor. Connecticut shade is one of the most famous examples of this technique. So, I mean, that's, that's a little bit, you know, of information that you can take with you and kind of drop that in the bank of information that you can impress your friends with that, you know, a shade grown cigar is going to be something that was grown under a cheese tent um, or a cheese cloth tent, not just a cheese tent or else it would probably taste like cheese, but you get the point. So the next word that we have right now is the hygrometer. Now, for anybody who is just getting into cigars, um, you know, I'm not sure if you're just kind of buying them one by one. And if you excuse me, I let my cigar go out, and that is a sin for myself, but I am sorry about that. But a hygrometer is going to be what is measuring the humidity of the humidor that you have that your cigars in. Now, some people wind up having different degrees of humidity that they like to keep their humidor in. Um, so for that, I personally, whenever I have my humidor set up, I like to keep it right between 69 and 70 for the humidity. Um, it, if you go any higher than 70, usually, at least what I found is my cigars kind of have a problem with staying lit because there's a lot of moisture in them. But if I have them any lower than 69, they really are pretty dry and I can, you know, have cracking. Uh, it might, you know, fall apart on me a little bit. So 69 to 70, it seems like for me anyway, is a good number to keep my humidor at to make sure that my cigars are right at that perfect temperature or not temperature, but that perfect degree of humidity for me to be able to smoke and not have too many issues with them unless it, you know, has a problem with it from when I bought it or maybe the cigar just, you know, wasn't manufactured in a correct way. There's, there's a lot of different things that can go through that, but for the most part, I like to keep my humidors right around 60 to seven or 69 to 70 for the degree of humidity. So the next one that I have, and I thought this was a pretty cool one, is the word coffin. So I know that my father's has a cigar, and I, I'm, I'm losing track of the name of the cigar, but there's a cigar from my father's that comes in a coffin. And this is a small wooden box, uh, probably like no bigger than this, you know, about, you know, this length and, you know, not this thick, probably about, you know, up to here, um, that holds one single cigar. And a lot of times you know, you're going to get that coffin with the cigar in it is usually going to be a specialty cigar. Uh, not every time is that the case, but you got to figure if they're putting that one cigar in a coffin, that means that it's probably a, a pretty nice cigar that's going to have some sort of um, special to it that the cigar company is putting out. I know that Asylum 13, which is another cigar company, uh, puts one of their cigars in a coffin as well. You don't see it too often because not too many people would go for the coffin. And especially if you wind up liking that cigar, you don't want to carry around like four of those coffins with you in a bag because now you just, I guess it's, it's too much. But a coffin, if anybody ever says, oh man, this cigar was excellent and it came in a coffin, now you will know that it's just a small little wooden box, usually for specialty cigars that that you know, cigar company or brand came out with that they wanted to kind of dress up a little bit more. So a cedar spill is the next word that I have here. And just like it says in the very first part of the word, the word cedar, it's a strip of cedar that they use with the cigar to kind of help influence lightening of the cigar. Um, you know, a lot of different cigar brands, you know, like to wrap their cigar before it goes in the cellophane, which this is the cellophane that usually comes around a cigar, unless some of them get sold openly. But, you know, the Andalusian Bull gets sold in the open versus cellophane. But a lot of cigar companies wind up putting a cedar, uh, a cedar spill in there with the box of the cigars, or they'll actually wrap the cigar in a cedar spill. 
uh, and that helps out with lightening of the cigar. Um, and, you know, another word that I, I really hate to think about, but it's not a myth. It does happen. Uh, and that word is a tobacco beetle. Now, there are beetles that love, love, love the taste of cigars, probably more than we love the taste of cigars. And those beetles will actually get rolled in or, you know, while the cigars are sitting waiting to be, you know, packaged, they'll eat their way into a cigar. And then the cigar gets put in a box, gets shipped out, goes to the tobacco distributor, goes to this tobacco shop. You sit down the box, you open the box. And what do you find? You find a hole in the cellophane. Now this doesn't have a hole, but I'm just using it as an example. But that means that there was a tobacco beetle that wound up and they're just little tiny beetles. I mean, they're probably, I mean, I don't even know if you can see, but they're only about yay big. They only make a small little hole and they eat the tobacco. And when they get full, then they got to get out. And now that there's cellophane around the cigar, now the beetle's like, well, now what am I going to do? Well, now it's got to eat through the cellophane and then it usually either dies off or, you know, gets you know transported somewhere else. But then you pick up a cigar and you say, oh, well, maybe just somebody dropped it or maybe it got snagged on something a tobacco beetle was basically eating your cigar. And that could really affect either the taste or the performance of your cigar. So always make sure what I try to do is if I find a cigar that has a, you know, a tobacco beetle hole in it or a tobacco beetle, you know, which doesn't happen very often. Usually they're pretty good about it, but usually I'll bring that up to whoever owns the shop and say like, Hey, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this. You might want to check your stock, but you did have a tobacco beetle in this cigar. Um, and just kind of let them know because if it did come out of that cigar and you know now it's kind of crawling around now it's going to get hungry again it's going to wind up going back into another cigar and it's going to mess up his stock so just always kind of keep that in mind as well the next word that i have on the list and this is the second to last word that i have on the list is underfilled so i'm going to flip the page so that way i know exactly what i'm talking about here so the underfilled word is a poorly filled cigar that feels either soft or hollow to the touch. These are, or these may likely suffer from burn issues or runners, which could be anything from canoeing. Um, it could just burn inward and not burn anything around it. I forget what the, what the term, which we'll go over all the terminology for that one as well. Uh, different types of burns and stuff, but that, that basically, it says it right there. It was an underfilled cigar. It was probably cheaply put together. Uh, it was probably something that, and God forgive me for saying this, but it was probably something that you bought at a gas station. I'd like to think that like the Philly Blunts and all that and everything, which are cigars supposedly, but not. Those are the type of cigars that you would usually get underfilled from. Or maybe it's just a newer cigar company that, you know, if they're putting out an underfilled cigar out there and they're hoping to make it big, that's kind of a shame. But... There is the word of underfill, and you know sometimes that does happen. And it doesn't mean that the cigar is going to like squish down to nothing, like a piece of paper. But it could feel really squishy. It could feel like you can kind of roll it and move the tobacco around. Um, my opinion would be just give it back to the you know cigar store owner or whoever, and say, look, this one feels like it's kind of underfilled. But there are cigars out there that can smush a little bit, but you know. Not that much as we're talking. You'll really know the difference when you wind up having that. And, of course, the last word that I have for the day, which is, you know, a pretty interesting word or words um, about the design of a cigar or, you know, what they could mean. It has a two meaning to it is vein or veins. So a vein is a part of the tobacco leaf that is sometimes visible in cigars. Traditionally pronounced veins are seen as unattractive or um, indecative ways of rushing the curing process. However, it is sometimes an international feature of some cigars. So some cigars actually, so the best way that I can describe it is for every tobacco leaf, there's a pretty side and an ugly side. And usually the ugly side is the vein of the cigar you can actually and just like you would think of like a maple leaf where you kind of see the stem in it you can see the veins on the one side and then you flip it over and it's real shiny and you can kind of see like a hint of them but they're not really there um some cigars actually and this one doesn't but some cigars will actually turn the the 
leaf on its other side and roll it the opposite way to give it that look where you can see the veins, you can see everything in the cigar, and, and it kind of gives it a cool look, but sometimes it's just, it, it's, it doesn't always go with the cigar. So it, it all depends on how the tobacco manufacturer wants to go with some of those words. But those are my definitions for our very first episode today. Um, like I said, we're going to be going through a lot on this series. Uh, I'm going to be learning just as much as you guys are going to be learning. There's some things that I need to refresh myself on. There's some things that I don't know. I'm like I said, in the beginning of the video, this is, this is basically for myself as much as it is for anybody who wants to watch these videos. Um, by no means am I a professional and not saying that to hurt the viewers or hurt the viewing of my videos, but I would rather give you the right information and bring this to you the right way than to sit here and say that I know everything and then have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. So as I go through all this stuff, like I said, we're going to be going over the different types of cigars when it comes to shapes, um, the different names that they have, you know, Corona, uh, Torpedo, Toro, uh, Robusto, uh, Grand Robusto. I mean, there's so much that we're going to be breaking down. And now this might help you as much as it's going to help me with knowing what we're talking about or what we're looking for as we go through these different types of things. So as I finish up this video, I would like to just say thank you all for watching uh, this is the first video of the series. I don't know how long the series is going to be until I get through the packet and probably will be adding things to that the more the time goes on. Um, this had a lot of information in it, and I know that not every video is going to be up to 30 minutes long, but I felt like it was important to bring a lot of this stuff onto the channel for the very first video because before you you know, learn to buy the cigar, you should learn how to talk for the cigar. And by that, I mean when you look for the words and this and that. So as I said, we're going to be learning together and I can't thank you all enough for watching. If you like these videos, please give them a like. Um, if there's something I missed, then go ahead and uh, put it in the comments and let me know if there's a word that you wanted or a word that I should have brought in. And like I said, we could always do a part two for the definitions or terminology. So with that being said, everybody, I'm Sean from the smoking section. And I will see you guys on the next one. As always, stay blessed, stay smoking, and I will catch you guys later. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you guys then. Later.